with the idea of bits, bit strings, a little bit more. So if we did this, And those of y'all who are at home aren't going to be able to see what I'm doing here. I'm going to be writing numbers on this little guy here, if it'll come up. You'll do. Oh, really? <laughs> well, how odd. I ought to be able to do it from here then. Okay. So, what do we got here? It's easier when they're, they're vice versa, like this one. Okay, so we have a one, we have a dead pin. We have the ones column, the twos column, the fours column. It's one, two, four, eights column, sixteens column. 32's column, 64 and 128, 256, 512, 1024, and 208. Well, that's quite a few. 1, 2, 4. How many is that? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 128, 256, 512, 128, 9, 10, 11, 12. He's, looks like he's 12 bits wide, or 13 if we count this blank line down him. So we could add up each one of these. If it was a blank row, it would be all zeros. We don't have any ones here, we don't have any twos here, we don't have any fours here. I think I've goofed up and added extra space to his side, but oh well, we'll live with it. We have a 16, excuse me, we do have a 16 here, so he's a 16 plus no 32, no 64, all the way to 512. So he's a 16 plus 512. Looks like that's a 528 for that first row. All right, he is a 32, ignoring the 64 and the 128, and the 256. 32 and 256, 8 to 88. All right, next line. He is a 16. He's got a whole bunch of them. 32, 64, 128, 256, and 512. And oh my gosh. I don't think I could do that, so I'm going to let Google tell me. All right, so 512 plus 256 plus 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16. All right, 1108. That one's a 1108. And let's just do one more line. I'm not going to do them all. I agree, let's not do them all. All righty, and so now we have an 8 and a 16, and we have a 64 and a 128. And we have a 512 and a 1024. We're just going to let Google tell us, right? Google knows all. We'll let them let Google tell us. Plus, uh, plus 64. So we're starting off with 8. 8 plus 16 plus 64 plus 128 plus 512 plus 1024. 1752. All right, 1752. All right, we have enough now. We have the first four lines of our Space Invader here. Let's see if we can display him on screen. Using those numbers.
So just to help me remember those numbers, I'm going to make a list out of them. I just like the capital letter L because it's easy to remember. Y'all can see that it's not a 1. So a list is declared as two things between square braces. And we have 528, comma, 288, comma, 1108. And if I mess these up, the, gar the uh, graphics are going to be gargled, gargled, garbled. All right. So first we're going to just get our structure into, into place. With a for loop, that would print those elements out. So for V in L, for every value in the list, print out L. That's just the first thing we're going to do. Just make sure we can get these series of numbers going. We feel good when we can com start compiling early, compiling often. All right, there's our numbers. OK, that was kind of dumb. I should not have been printing out L over and over and over. I should have been printing out V. I just don't want to print a list four times in a row. I want to print each value in the list. Let's fix that. Change that to a V. Run it again. All right, there we go. Right, those are our numbers. We want to convert them to bit strings to be displayed. A couple ways you can convert things to a bit string. One way is we can just take advantage of the fact that, here, watch this for a second. I can use the formatting, just like when uh, we, were, we were doing something else. But if we do this, it'll convert that to a bit string. And if you want it zero padded out to a specific length, you could do that. Honestly, I've forgotten the syntax. Remind me. How do you? Or I guess I could look yeah, up my list. Like zero seven. If you want like seven extra zero. So zero does the zero padding. What does zero padding mean? Oh yeah, you can't edit it. That's why you never do. Uh, programming in a shell. All right, this means pad it out le with leading zeros, and then the next one says how many digits total is it supposed to be? And so there we go. It's 20 digits long now, and it's got zeros in front of it. Why are we going to want zeros in front of it? Well, because our numbers here, as we were adding them up for the Space Invader, we don't want to just stop. There, or there, or there, we want it to go all the way out to the end. And I think, how many bits total did we just say? 12, so I'm going to say 13, just to get a blank row. Excuse me, a blank column. So let's do that. Let's get our value. Let's do S is equal to, we're going to just store the format of our string before we print it out. S is equal to, and then a placeholder, curly quotes, not parentheses. Inside the placeholder, I'm going to put a colon 013B. That means zero padded, leave 13 spaces total, and print it as binary. If you wanted to print it as base 10, you'd do a D there. If you wanted to print it at hexadecimal, you'd do an X there. But we like binary. And octal would be an O. We want binary. All right. And then dot format, parentheses, V. Now let's print S out. It's kind of hard to see what's going on with all the zeros and the ones, in my opinion. It might be cool if we were printing out blanks or periods just to see that they were there for the zeros and X's or something else for the ones. So let's replace 
all the zeros in our string before we print them out with spaces. So s dot replace, excuse me, s equals s dot replace parentheses quote please replace all zeros in quote comma with spaces. Or let's just do dots first. Quote period end quote close parentheses. Obviously, I added up that third line wrong. Oh, well, you're getting the idea. And let's replace all the ones with something that's a little bit cooler than. Can we do ASCII characters? Um, can we? There's an ASCII character for a filled block. And I wonder if we can use it. So ASCIItable.com. You can go there a lot more often than I was actually planning. See, there's 178, which is a filled block. Or there's also 254. I'm going to see if I can type that in there. Alt 254. No, have to hold the numeric key down. I'm not ex finding that to work, but we can just try it out here. Print the character version of 254 in parentheses, in parentheses. Well, that's not right. For x in range. 127 comma up to 255 in parentheses colon. Please print out X and the character version of X. I don't see anything better than just a capital X would be. All right, forget that. Failed effort. But let's replace all the ones with capital X's. Same business. S equals S dot replace parentheses quote all the ones, end quote, comma, with the capital X, end quote, in parentheses. And there it goes. We're starting to build our Space Invader. <coughs> Looking at it, I don't quite know what I did wrong, but I'm not going to take the time to figure it out. So the third line's wrong? Yeah, it's 100 off. So if I subtracted 128 from it, it would just work? About, just 100, I think. Okay. I think you put 356 into the 2. Oh, well, that would be a problem. Yeah, okay. So the third one needs to be lowered up by 100. Yeah. There we go. And since we have three bits left, left on this side and only two bits left on this side, and we want them to be perfectly symmetrical, at least I do, then we're going to go back to our code, and instead of making it 13 bits wide, we're going to make it 14 bits wide. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Cool. All righty. It'd be fun to finish drawing them, but anyways, that's how old video games... The graphics were invented. Bitmapped. The old black and white Macintosh had pixels, right, that were either on or off. You know, they were black or they were white. It's called bitmapped graphics. The old character set, right, you had an old, uh, back when you had single monochrome monitors. You can see the pixels in them, right? You boot up your VIC-20 or your Apple II or your Apple 64. And the letters were made like that, right? Nowadays, of course, it's a lot more pixels. Excuse me, a lot more values per pixel than just one. Wow. So, you know, you don't just need an on or an off but if it's being displayed 
with a, a good graphics card capable of displaying on you know uh, millions of shades per color it probably be values of 0 to 256 per pixel each for red green and blue so each pixel is a set of colors we've seen RGB values before perhaps did not mean to type RGB red robin gourmet burgers alrighty now we know how their stock's doing. So each pixel on your screen is composed of combinations of red, blue, and green. Kind of weird, but that's the way that the eyes is worked up. The eyeball is work is wired up with its sensitivity. So pure blue has a lot of blue and almost no red and no green in it. And pure 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 blue has absolutely no green or red in it at all and so it would have some blue value but the other two values would be zero a lot more complicated to display that kind of thing nowadays that's okay all right say we were curious about the bitmaps of the letters like if we wanted to print out the letters a through z and we wanted to see their little bitmaps well we've got a cool function for doing that we just haven't put it in a function yet, right? We have those three lines. We could turn that into a function pretty easily just by cutting those three lines and adding a DEF up here. So let's do DEF space bit string parentheses V in parentheses colon and then cut those three lines and paste them under there indented you know correctly one level of indention deep color copy and pasting cut and paste I mean you could copy and paste if that's your choice but I and then what do we need to do we've calculated a string we need to return it if we don't if we don't return it it's like I bake a cake and I don't give it to you you won't be happy. I hog it all for myself. So we return the string so that down here we can use it. Before we get more complicated, we're just going to make it do the exact same that it did before, but using our function. Don't type there. S equals bit string, parentheses V, in parentheses, like that. So what's the real point of this lesson so far? Is it to draw a space invader? No, but that's to kind of visualize it. I want you to have the idea that you can create a string and then you can start replacing parts of it. For example, if you were playing Hangman, you might want to replace all the spaces in it with periods. But then next time, after they've guessed day, you could replace all the spaces in it, every letter in it with periods except for the A's, something like that. That might kind of be a brute force method of doing it. Um, maybe not the best way, but you could. So let me run this to make sure we haven't broken it yet. Yeah, he's working now. All right. Now let's print out ASCII. If we stick to the regular letters of ASCII, it's only seven bits wide. Not sure why they did that. Well, I guess because seven bits were enough to hold every letter on the typewriter, uppercase and lowercase, plus some control codes. How do I know it's seven bits? Because it only goes up to 127. Eight bits will go up to 255, just as we've explained before. One plus two plus four plus eight plus 16. So let's make a loop that'll count from 32, and let's skip space, 33 all the way up to the tilde, which is 126 printing out the number and then the symbol and then the bitmap for it. So here, let's write a for loop that does that. For V in range, I wanted to start at 123. I want to end at 126, so I better make that 127. Going up by ones each time, and remember putting that last comma one is optional. If you leave it off, it goes up by ones anyways. 
let's get the bitmap for it. Same way we did up here. Right there where that S is equal to bit string. S equals bit string of V. And let's get the character version of it. The character is equal to chr parentheses v, right? So this is the bit string, I mean, obviously. And this is the character. And then we can print those two things out. Let's skip printing the number out. Who cares about the number itself? Print parentheses, I mean, we could, but then we'd want to format it correctly so that it was either two or three characters wide. Oh, why not? One placeholder. And it's a number, so I'm going to put, it's a, you know, a base 10 number, so I'm going to put a D there. Comma. Wait, not even comma. And then another placeholder. And this is going to be the character itself, and it's a string. And then one more, which is our bitmap. And we're going to print the bitmap to be seven bits wide. So colon 7s, end quote. Not end quote, end brace. And then end quote dot format, and we're going to fill in this placeholder, this placeholder, and this placeholder with V, C H A R, and S. V comma C H A R comma S. And then one more closing parentheses. Doc format. You yeah. Need to, uh, since you're passing three, you need to specify zero one three or zero one zero one two. I don't think I need to do that, but I'm willing to. I think the real problem is, is I didn't put their format specifier. But yes, we'll add the uh, the space. Okay. So. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Why did it pad it out to so many dots? Oh, because bits during here is hard coded to do 14 spaces. What would be awesome is if we made it so that it could accept a second variable, which was the number of bits. Now, that's, that's getting a little bit more than what I wanted to do. I didn't really want to do that, so I'm going to call this bit 8 string or bit string 8. I'm just going to make a copy and paste. But here's what I want to do is be able to pass in, don't type that in, comma num, and then build this string, replacing that 14 with the character version of num, right? You know, so that if we pass in 8, it'll say 0, 8b. And, but that's going to make the code even harder than to follow than what we've got here. So I'm just going to change this copy and paste this and call it bit string 8 so I have a new function right so I copied all that I'm gonna paste it and change those 14 that 14 to an 8 and call it bit string 8 you see what I did there I just made a duplicate of that function it's inelegant when you're making duplicates of functions that differ only by their, their behavior in a little bit but I'm willing to roll with it in the interest of making this example as clear as possible. And then I'm just going to change in my for loop, my second for loop, it's going to call bit string 8. Or didn't I even say 7? Ah, let's just leave it 8. So right here, bit string 8. Because honestly, bytes are 8 bits long, and ASCII is a byte-oriented character set. So, all right, and there's all of our bits patterns for all of our letters. And I can't get it all on here in one fell swoop. I'll bring the code back up without this on there for those of y'all typing along. But see, an exclamation mark looks like that. 
with zeros and ones and so on. Maybe this version, we didn't want to replace all the X's and the O's. Maybe we really liked them being zeros and ones for the 8-bit version. Okay, fine. Now, if we were going to do that, there's an easier way to do that. I mean, we didn't need even, even need to make it a function if we were going to do that. But see, we've changed this behavior now. These are the bits that add up to that. If we wanted to figure it out, that's a 1. There's no 2s. There's no 4s. But there's an 8, 16, 32, and 64. And if I added all those up, that's a 121. Now, one of the programming problems in MindTap is to take a character, get its ordinal value, add one to it, create a bit string from it, and then rotate it, right? Do all that. And I didn't assign it to you. Some of y'all are working on it because y'all like to do a lot, of, all of the mind tap problems for the extra practice, and I think that's totally cool. That one was kind of a bear to work through, though. All right, we're almost done with bits. What do I mean to, that this was pointless to do that? I could have just made this say zero, you know, a b right there, and then just printed out the, you know, the value again. If it's not doing this fancy stuff up here, and yeah, maybe want to print something else out. I don't know. Let's stick with the the dots and the x's, or let's make it an absolute space. And let's make this one an absolute space as well. Then we're going to stop messing with it. With that part. Okay, right. And so our space invader looks like that. That's my favorite representation yet. And here is what all the bits look like. Except they would, of course, be zeros and ones. All right, suppose you were interested in what only the last... four bits were. You didn't even care about the rest of the bits. You only wanted the last four bits. You can use what's known as bitwise and and bitwise or. Bitwise and does an and operation on each bit. It's not a logical and. It doesn't check to see true or false. And instead, ands the two, the uh, two series of bits together. So if you had something like that, and then you had that, and you were going to bitwise and them, you follow the same truth table that we had before, where both of them have to be lit up with a, with either a true or a one in order for the result to be a true or a one. But instead of just doing logically one true against one false or whatever. A true and a true is the only way, wait, that was, that was, I said the word and and I typed the word bit. So a bitwise and. Both columns, excuse me, both elements have to be a true for the result to be true. Or both of them have to be one for the result to be one. The only one of these where both of them are one, here is a one. And then this column, there's a zero and a one, but and means they both have to be one. So that doesn't work. Here, this means that both of them have to be 1, but they're not. And here, they both need to be 1. Well, neither one is. So by doing a bitwise AND and passing in two bits here, we extracted these last two bits. Right? It's called masking. Right? If I wanted these last two bits, I would bitwise AND it against these two. And what is that value? That's a 1 plus a 2. So bitwise AND of 3. So if we took x and bitwise ANDed it against 3, we get the last two bits. What if you wanted the first two bits? You bitwise AND it against something else, right? Same starting number, right? But you bitwise AND it against 0, 0. That means that the last two zeros are completely ignored, right? Because if you and something against false, you get falses. So there's no way that the last two positions could have any data whatsoever. But the first one might. A 1 and a 1, just like a true and a true is a true, a 0 and a 1 is a false. 
And so now we have extracted the first two bits, right? What if it all the bits were lit up and we got the last two? Well, hopefully that's easy enough to figure out at this point. The first two get wiped out with zeros because if you add anything against a false, it's a false. And then these two bits, you have to check the value of the two above them. And in this case, both columns have ones in them, all ones. And so there, we extracted the last two bits. Hope that makes sense. And if you did zero, zero, zero along the top, then of course the answer would be zero. So what is the bitwise AND operator? Bitwise AND is represented by a single ampersand. Why do you care about stuff like that? Is that just stupid stuff? Well, yeah, kind of, but IP header. <laughs> if you look up, like, you know, the internet transmission protocol that the internet is based on had to be defined, right? And so your video card, excuse me, your, your network card or your cell modem or whatever is sending out series of zeros and ones in some format with a header. And in this case, it's saying that the first four bits of it are the version. And then the next four bits are the IHL, whatever that is. Oh, IP header length. This one looks like it's a little bit better. IP header length. And so on. Pulling out the individual bits to determine which computer to send that packet to, you know, what uh, what IP address it came from, what IP address it's coming to, right? 32-bit source IP address, 32-bit destination IP address. And so you, you need to get these values, and then in order to turn them into a number, in order to process them, you might need to shift the bits. Maybe not going to talk about shift, but let's figure out what the last two bits of all of our numbers are up here. Uh, okay. We're going to add them against the value. If we want the last two bits, we would add them against the value 1, 1, which is a 3. If we want the first two bits, well, there's no 1s, there's no 2s, but there's a 4 and an 8. We would do a bitwise AND against 12. I kind of hope that y'all are getting the idea of how I'm turning these bits into numbers. Right. We've done that often enough. I hope. That's a 1. That's a 2. That's a 4. That's an 8. All this thing has is an 8 and a 4. Just like I was doing when I was figuring out my Space Invader. All right. So the last two bits is to take our number and bitwise and them against 3. Or if you feel like it, you could do that. Specify a binary string, and we're telling Python that it's a binary string by the fact that it begins with 0B. I don't know that I like that. I'm just going to leave it as a 3. But I'm going to make a comment that that is 0011. And since it's an integer and it's 32 bits wide or even more, it's really padded out with a whole bunch of, right, but who cares? That's the important part. And now let's get the first two. The first two is equal to our value that we care about, bitwise and against 12. So let's print the number itself, print the number itself, followed by the first two and the last two. And then for funsies, let's print out that number, V comma, the last two and the first two. Let's just swap their order. And then let's print a blank line. And really, that's going to be way too much to see, right? Because we're going to have, you know, 60, 70, 80, line, 90 lines of output. So this for loop probably had better not go up as far. So 
So let's just do another four for V in range. Starting at zero and going up to 31. Going up by ones. So this counts from zero to 32, right? And let's let it go. Or not. Oh, I forgot to put a number here. V ampersand 12. I just botched that line, gang. So if you're typing and you type exactly what I do, rather than what I say, you need to fix this line. Add the 12 there. Is that supposed to be in? Yeah. For V ohm range. I started meditating. Here we go. For V. <laughs> what? There. All righty. <clears throat> My fingers were off by one. And a for loop ends in a. There. I was being sloppy there for some reason. There we go. And if I want to go up to 32, I don't really want to put 31 here. Man, I was sloppy. I really wanted to count from 30, 0 to 31 <laughs> because, just because. As a matter of fact, let's just go up from 0 to 15 because that's the most that a 4-bit number can hold. But if I want to count up from 0 to 16, what do I make that? I just gave away the answer. If I want to count from 0 to 15, what do I put here? 16. 16. Yeah, there we go. And I've left off a quote somewhere. And I'll close mine. Mm. Okay. What'd I mess up? Triple quoted string literal. I typed in a whole bunch of notes apparently and never closed them. Oops. No, so three quotation, yeah. Need three quotes at the bottom of my comments, right? Run it. Surely no mistakes this time. And here we go. If you took these are the first two bits, that's not looking right to me. Right, because if you bit calculate a bitwise and against zero, it should be zero. Well, isn't that mysterious? Um Oh, I. Uh, these two lines as well need to be cut and moved down here above these print statements, right? Because it's just printing over and over the last value of last two and first two. So cut those two lines, last two and first two, and put them as the first two statements of the last for loop. All right, and here we go, right? We get. Zero, which means that the last two bits of zero are zero, and the first two bits of zero are also zero. One, the last two bits of zero are one, and the first two bits of zero, excuse me, of one are zero. It might be easier to see if we were actually converting these things to bit strings in order to see them. I don't feel like modifying it to do that. Wouldn't be hard though, right? I would just have to change these things to be placeholders and then use the correct formatting to print them out. I think I'll do that. Then this will be the last change. Stop being a perfectionist. I'm going to take those two things out. Not going to print them in reverse order or the blank lines anymore. And I'm honestly just going to start this all over because if I start hacking it and making changes to it, it's not going to work. So I want to print out the number which is just a base 10 number. I don't even need to put that um, colon D there because by default it prints out, um, prints out you know, correctly. But I'm going to leave it like that. Or maybe I want them to be too wide, right? Because we're counting from 0 up to 15. Some of them are going to be one digit wide. We'll go back and fix that. That's supposed to be a curly brace and I typed a parentheses. All right, the next one, it needs to be in binary, 
and it needs to be two bits wide because we got the last two bits and the first two bits so it only needs to be two bits wide but I do want them packed with zeros at the beginning so curly brace exclamation mark zero meaning pack it with zeros at the beginning to B because I want it to be represented in binary in curly brace and the next one's going to be the exact same thing I could even copy it and paste it curly brace colon zero to B in curly brace and that's about enough for this string so I'm going to end my formatting string with a double quote and I need to format pass in the values that are to fill in the placeholders which is the value and then the first two so V comma first two comma last two you could make a cipher out of this in a way right you could take the bits of your number of your ASCII value and you could just swap some of the bits right and then if you remember that pattern you could swap them again to get your original text and it would be unreadable you know at until you had done the unswap again the NSA would crack it in you know like two nanoseconds but ten, ten here we go and valid syntax I forgot my closed parentheses there and I close that again okay. There. What did I do wrong here? I have an opening parentheses here, and then I have two and a second one, so I needed two closed parentheses, and I only had one. I'll do walkabout to see if you were trying to get this to work, then to help with syntax errors, and then we'll move on. I'm building a Mar Mario character. I'm going to put it in my Python. I got character calculate all the bits out of it. Okay, why did it print out four bits rather than two? Yeah, that's cool. It's because if you extract the first two bits of it, it's still got those last two, right? So when I took the first two bits here, it was still a four-bit value. To fix that, I would need to shift these over by two bits. What does shift mean? If I had this number, zero, zero, one, zero, and I shifted it one bit to the left, then that one would march over there, right? Just moved over. We've talked about shift before, except we did it with strings. And then if we had 0010 zero, 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 and we shifted it two bits, then it would become 1000, zero, 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 right? Because this guy ran over two times. And if we shifted it three bits, the result would all be zeros. So, what do we want to do? Our answer, the first two bits were the ones that are important, so we need to shift left, excuse me, right by two to get these guys over here so that when we print it out, it's not four digits wide, it's only two. So we're going to say that first two equals the value shifted by two bits to the right. Shift two bits to the right. Just so instead of it saying 1100, zero, zero, it's going to move those bits over two to the right. It's okay if you don't totally get that, but I know we've already talked about shifting before, so I bet you do. All right, and here we go, right? Splitting it up, those are the first two bits, those are the last two bits for zero. Well, zero doesn't have anything on, so that's why it's all zeros. One has the ones place lit up. Two has the two place set up. Four has the fourth place set up. Five has the, five, the fours column and the ones column. Fifteen has them all set up. All right. It'll be cool if you understand the idea of bitwise and. Bitwise OR is the same thing, except you're following the logic of OR rather than AND. So if you had this number, and then you bitwise OR it against 0011, bitwise OR against the value 3, it follows the logic of OR, which is that if either one is set, the result is 
1. So is one of these two a 1? Sure is. The result is a 1. Is one of these two a 1? No, they're both zeros. So the result is a 0. Are one of these two a 1? Sure is. And one of these two a 1? Sure is. Boom, we got it. Now, I'm not going to go any further in that example. I just want you to know that bitwise AND and bitwise OR work like that. There's also a bitwise NOT, which just reverses them. If you bitwise NOT, 0011, it turns into 1100. And there's also something called exclusive OR, which is a one where it's exactly one. Not if one or two of them are lit, but if only one of them is lit. Right, and do we have only one in this column? Yeah, do we have only one in this column? No, so that would have been a zero. Do we have only one in this column? Nope, oops, we have two lit up, so that one would have been a zero. Do we have only one lit up in the last column? Yeah, so it would have been one, zero, zero, one. Pause. All right, gang, the rest of the lecture was missed. So, I guess I better post an announcement to that effect. Go and check the notes. Very specifically, you're going to want to pay attention to the review. How do you open a file for reading or for writing? What read versus read line does? A for loop to read from a file. What's the syntax for it? It's just for variable in file, right? How do you split a string? These commas are the delimiters. It could be delimited by spaces. And so you call the split command. And if you were going to delimit it by spaces, you would replace that comma with a space. Always close a file when you're done reading and writing. How do you make a dictionary? Honestly, I'm probably not going to ask anything about dictionaries because I think that was chapter 5. And I'm going to make this exam focus on chapter 4 more. How to create a list. We have done this often enough that even if it's not adequately covered in le lecture four, I'm going to ask you anyways, right? How do you make a list? You just declare values between empty braces, excuse me, between square braces. You use slicing to get stuff out of a string. If you want the first three characters of the string, you would start with zero and go to three, right? Because that's zero, one, and two, up to but not including three. Or if you just want the first character, you just specify 0. Or if you wanted the second character, you would specify 1. So I could write some code for you, and then you tell me what the syntax error is. That's just going to be something like maybe a missing colon, or the code's not tabbed appropriately, or we mix, missed up the equals and the double equals, things like that. I'm going to try to make it so that it's not so complicated you feel compelled to copy and paste it into uh, idle. If I was horribly mean, I would actually make it an image so that you would have to type it all in into idle. It's plausible. Know how to write an if statement. We're going back in time to the easier stuff, like if x is less than 3, or if x is greater than 0 and less than 3, right? If x equals 3 or x equals 4, that kind of stuff. To check in a range, you use AND. To check out of a range, you use OR. Write a loop. Could be either a for loop or a while loop. That'll count from 10 to 20. Write a loop that would count from 10 to 100 by fives. I would certainly use a for loop for that, right? If you're going from 10 to 100, so you make that one past it, skipping fives every time. Do know your operators and your precedents. Hopefully you know most of that from junior high math, right? Parentheses, highest order, followed by exponents, which is asterisk, asterisk, right? Followed by multiplication and division. And these are all the forms of multiplication and division, right? There's actually four forms in this, even though you only learn two, you know, in junior high math. We also have modulus and floor division. What's floor division? Divide and round down. Divide and round down. In addition and subtraction. That's the last order. So if you have an expression like this, know how to multiply, know how to calculate it. You would do the multiplication first. 
understand the syntax of a while loop? Looks something like this, right? Know what break does versus what continue does, right? Two different concepts. What's a break versus what's a continue? I could write this code and ask you what it would print out. Now, since this prints before it breaks at 6, it would actually print out 3, 4, 5, 6. If the break statement came before the print statement, then it's breaking right when it hits 6. It wouldn't print 6 out, and so it would just print 3, 4, and 5. And then review all unit quizzes, right? Very important. Eyeball your homework assignments. See if I skipped anything in my review. You know, it's open book, meaning you can get on MindTap, open PowerPoints. If you've taken notes, you can use your notes. Anything you've uploaded to Canvas, your homework assignments or any notes, right? Open professor, ask me questions. Don't Google. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Don't Google. It's a test about you, not how fast you can Google. All right. Hope that's clear. If you can't make the quiz, let me know. I didn't mention this in class, but I'll post it as an announcement so that I can set it up at the library. All righty. Well, that's clear enough. If you wanted to run the rest of the code that we didn't get to type in, it was just kind of more of the same, but what we type, talked about after you left is what shift left and shift right. When I say after you left, after I paused it, it's probably shifting left and shifting right. I'll go back and see how far we actually got in the lecture out of curiosity. Shifting left just means moving all the bits left. Like this would move them all to the left two bits. If you put the arrows going the other way, it would shift them to the right. And then we talked about bitwise and. And we'll cover that again. All right. Thank you very much. See you next time.